Chris the Bergeron Zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hi, thanks all for coming today. My name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Um, there are 65 of us. We have offices in Westboro and in Worcester. I'm the elder law person, uh, and I've been doing this for about 35 years. But when I talk about elder law, I really conceive of elder law as being, people typically say, so what is that exactly? Well, I think it's really about not just kind of helping you figure out your will, you know, and these things, although those are important, but really helping you understand a number of issues that might affect you, affect you, typically issues that are going to help you like they're trying to help my friends Frank and Mary stay home. Because my, my clients, typically, their goal in life is they want to stay home, they want to die at home, they want to be buried in the backyard, whatever they have left over, they want to divide up among their kids. Now, but, but today's, and, and by the way, what I typically talk about Frank and Mary, this is Frank and Mary. They own a house. Uh, it's worth about $300,000. They have, he has a small IRA. They have an annuity, some joint, joint savings. So their total other assets are a little over $300,000. But the mortgage is paid. Uh, he's on Social Security getting uh, $2,000 a month. Um, and he's getting a pension of $500 a month. She's getting her spousal benefit of $1,000 a month. They're going to be OK. They've got about $3,500 a month in income. They're OK living in their house, uh, which is really what they want to do. But there comes, a, there comes some point, and, and by the way, this is everybody's other goal. Never, never, never do I want to go to a nursing home, ever, ever, right? Uh, and oftentimes, people will, when they're thinking about this, they assume that an assisted living facility is really kind of a nursing home in disguise, right? Um, but I guess the, the reason why I wanted to talk today is, is th there does come a point, um, or there may come a point for folks where staying home, home being the rolled house, isn't going to work. Now, I know the last presentation that we did in the last hour, we talked about the tremendous number of modifications that you can now make. There's a lot of technology out there that will allow you to stay home in your own home. Um, but sometimes that doesn't work, and it just doesn't become safe. And that's the time at which an assisted living facility may make the most sense for a whole lot of reasons. So I've asked um, Chet, Ol Ch is it Chet Olson, Chet Olson from The Heritage, which is really about, I, you know, he's an elder lawyer. I go to see a lot of assisted living facilities. I go to a lot of nursing homes. The Heritage is about the nicest of the assisted living facilities that I've seen. And, and, it's, and it's an older facility. It's not a brand new facility. So we asked them to him to come because it's really kind of an example of a great place. I'm sorry, that sounds like an ad, but it really is nice. So we wanted him to talk about who comes to an assisted living facility and why is it that they come and to talk briefly about costs. I'd actually like to know, because typically when people hear assisted living, in the back of the mind, they just go, ka-ching, I can't afford that. Um, so I wanted to talk about costs. And then we've asked Patty Surveys to come. Patty, I often get questions regarding the veteran's benefit, the so-called veteran's benefit. Uh, and if you're not a veteran, or the wife of a veteran, or the widow of a veteran, that piece isn't going to feel really relevant to you, and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, um, but, the re but this comes up all the time, and one of the things that Patty pointed out to me is that nationally, 80%, over 80% of all folks living in uh, um, assisted living uh, are taking advantage of the veterans benefit, and that's the reason why they can afford it. So I wanted you to understand what that benefit is, how it works, there are a number of misconceptions about it. Patty is probably the state expert on this. She, her name regularly comes up. So finally, because I, I kept hearing about her, I, I called her. I said, so, you know, you know could we get together some, at some point? And I, I, she said, oh, sure. She said, I live in Marlboro. Well, I live in Marlboro, right? I said, well, this is very handy, right? So I asked her to come over today just to, uh, to talk. And, and incidentally, if, if you, if you, if, you, if this is a value to you or you know somebody for whom this would be a value to you, this is going to get repeated on cable. Uh, and also, we have a YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel now, and it's in your, your handout. And we're going to upload this onto the YouTube channel. So if you hear information here 
and you're like, oh, I, I don't quite get that. Well, then go back to the, to the YouTube channel and, and look at it or, or call us. So first, I'd like to have Chet Olson talk to you about assisted living in general and about you know, when it's appropriate. And then I'm going to have Patty Surveys talks. Chet. Thanks, Arthur. Appreciate that. And I'm from Marlboro, too, by the way. So that makes three of us. <laughs> and uh, Heritage Senior Living, we have Independent Living, we have Assisted Living. We have Memory Care, and it's all apartment living. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, it's all apartment living, and in our case, we're nonprofit. One of the points that I wanted to make is that whenever you're trying to make decisions about housing, where you might live, if you do need assistance, it's good to plan ahead. A lot of people, I just talked to a woman out here at the, the senior fair, and she was saying, we did this in a crisis, and at the time she thought one place was as good as another. That's not really the case. Not quite true. Um, and what you want to do is you want to shop. That's one of my biggest points. Get information, shop around ahead of time before you're in a crisis, and you can make a better decision. Um, one of the, the nice things that we have as a differentiator is that we are local. Our board members are local people whose parents live with us now or they've lived with us in the past. And so when we go to our board members, because their parents live there, we can get more services. We have, in a place like this, 100 residents. Typically, if you're looking at other places in the market, you might get two activity directors. We have seven people. So dig around, shop around, ask questions. They're not all the same. Some uh, places like us might offer residential setting that you can go in under the regulations. It's all apartment living. It's non-medical, it's a social model. But you might not get as many services at one place as you do a, at another. Um, some have assisted living. We also have independent living. We also have memory care. We're also associated with skilled nursing. We have a relationship and are part of the Marianne Morris Healthcare Corporation. So, yes. We are in Knobscott, which is the north part of Framingham. We're next to Hemingway School on Water Street. Um, some of the things that you'll see here in assisted living or independent living, certainly you, you have housing where you rent an apartment. Some of the places out there you're going to find, if you shop around, they're going to want you to put thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 or more down before you can even move in. A lot of places you can do monthly rental like you can at Heritage. It's just a month-to-month -month rental, and if you want to walk away with a 60-day notice, you can walk away. We do have support services. We clean your apartment. We make meals. One of the biggest things that you can get out of assisted living or even independent living is socialization. A lot of people we see get isolated. And one of the, the biggest things in research that you can see today why people stay healthier are people who are connected to other people and who keep active. Um, the other thing that you'll see with the uh, activities programs that we put on, if you were to graph cognitive functioning, it's going downward. If you can get stimulated and stay active, instead of having a steep decline, it may taper off over time more gradually. So that is one of the hugest benefits of being in a supported community, not being isolated. And when people move in, it's all individualized to you. And this is true anywhere you go in Massachusetts. We're actually required under the regulating authorities, Executive Office of Elder Affairs, to create a service plan based on your individual needs. So if it's diets, medications, certain types of issues with eyesight or hearing, we're going to sit down with you before you come in. We're going to find out if you have special dietary needs, gluten-free diets, low sodium, low sugar, those are all going to be part of the individualized service plan. 
Um, we also provide a lifeline system. If you press a button on a wristband or a pendant, you'll get help. People will come within a minute or two. This is this is an internal lifeline, so we would have a certified nursing assistant would respond first, right there on site, 24 hours a day, and we have nurses there from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. They're going to determine, is it really an emergency? If so, we actually have a squad next door, and this is a, a huge help and a peace of mind factor. Like I say, the activities, these are going to keep you stimulated cognitively. It's going to improve the quality of your life. We take trips into Boston. Last week, we went to Foxwoods. Um, we bring in pet therapy. We bring in the Golden Tones. We bring in the Singing Trooper we have coming on uh, Veterans Day. And we go to concerts on the green. We have the Girl Scouts. We have trips to the Blocks Preschool all kinds of great things going on for uh, different interests. And we have a woman who does a painting class that we bring in. She devotes her Fridays to us, uh, Gallery in the Pines of, from Hudson. We provide all the materials. If you want to learn how to paint, just show up. It's that kind of thing that you can't get when you're living at home. Housekeeping, um, you're free to come and go and have a car or free to ride our bus. If it's a blizzard, we'll drop you off door to door. Um, we can really help you make a transition by, again, come in and visit, have a meal, talk to residents. One of, one of our longtime residents used to say, this is a beautiful building, and a lot of places are beautiful, but you know what? She would say, it's more about the people who care for us. And ask questions. Talk to residents. Take your time. Don't wait for a crisis. You want to really plan this out so that you make a better decision. Do you want a small community like we have at Heritage? Maybe you want something bigger. Maybe you want something like at LaSalle Village where they offer college classes. And everybody's got a little bit different niche of what, what they offer.